Hello guys, today I have um, a 3D um, common block version of Wireworld. Um, I've made this pretty much right after I made the survival redstone version of Wireworld. But um, yeah, never gotten around to making a video of it. Um, so here we are, basically. Um, so yeah, let's take a look at how it works, I guess. So this um, black stained clay um, acts, <coughs> acts as our uh, wire, so we can just place that. And then we can place a signal head by placing this, and as you can see it will be replaced with the redstone block. And we can place a uh, signal tail like that. And then in order to um, execute one time step basically we can just drop our yellow stained clay as you can see it moves one um, so how the movement works basically is that every um, signal head and signal tail um, will decrease its state by one meaning that the signal head will become a signal tail and a signal tail will uh, turn back into a conductive wire and every conductive wire will basically look in a 3x3 three three area around itself so basically these blocks um, to see how many um, signal heads there are and if there are one or two it will turn into a signal head itself but if there are zero or more than two um, it will just remain a conductive wire um, so yeah with those simple uh, rules we basically create these uh, signals that travel through a wire then also um, if we were to place like three signal heads right here um, yeah it, it would basically overcrowd this cell <coughs> meaning that it won't turn into a signal head but the signal will just die out as you can see but if we would have only had two of them here it would um, continue on, so that's basically the way you do logic gates in this, you can turn signals off by basically overcrowding the spot um, so then for the controls we can also start a clock by um, dropping this uh, red stained clay, so at the right you can see um, in the sidebar that clock on is currently zero meaning it's off uh, if we drop it it will turn into uh, turn to one and the timer uh, says how many ticks it takes for every step to execute so if I drop it now it will um, do one step every 10 game ticks so as you can see it automatically um, goes through there then in order to change that um, delay in between every step we can drop this um, black stained clay so as you can see it decreases one every time you drop it and if it goes back to zero it will yeah, loop to ten basically again so if we have it at one that's the fastest we can go it's pretty fast as you can see and yeah as said this is three dimensional so it can go upwards and sideways and all those things and then the last control we have is uh, this green um, hardened clay and if we drop this it will basically just remove all the signals that exist so there you go and the signals are removed also a thing to note is that only the signals um, execute commands and cause lag for that reason the conductive wire itself is just black stained clay and nothing more but the signals um, contain armor stands in them to execute the commands basically um, and then this last block is also special when you place it because what it does is if you um, power it with redstone so for instance just a simple button input uh, it will turn into a signal head as you can see so if we then turn on this clock you can basically create um, 
signals with redstone by doing that. And that's the reason that the signal head is also a redstone block. Because now we can basically create a um, clock for instance or instance or anything else um, together. So you can basically combine this system with regular redstone. So that's pretty cool in my opinion. Um, so yeah, let's take a look at um, uh, some of the piston contraptions I made with this. So this is a 3x3 door that I already showed in a previous video and I didn't explain anything about the wire that I used um, just to try at least to confuse you guys. Um, so yeah, this is obviously using my um, uh, wire world system. So uh, for these things to work we do need the timer to be on um, 1. Um, because otherwise yeah, it would just be too slow uh, and won't spit out the block basically. Um, so now it works just as you would expect. That was quite a bit of lag. But that's a bit of a shame. Ok, that was fairly smooth. So yeah, it uh, just opens and closes fairly nicely. And I think it's pretty cool that you can do this using uh, this system. Um, then the other thing I made is just a simple triple piston extender. It's a little big, but um, yeah, it works at least. So this is the extension. And uh, for the retraction we power this. And it's fairly fast. So yeah, it's just a pattern where, where I can power the same input uh, three times in order to retract the whole thing. So that's um, pretty cool in my opinion. Obviously I can hook up these, um, these inputs to it as well. They cause a little bit of lag though because they do contain armor stands that are trying to execute commands all of the time. Um, so yeah, now let's take a look at some of the logic. So these first few circuits I already demonstrated in my um, survival wire world video as well. But I will just uh, show them again. So this is a simple diode. The signal um, won't be able to pass through from this side. But if we power it from this side it will be able to pass through it. Um, then this one is basically a diode as well but directional so I also call it an OR gate. So basically this signal just travels to the right there and then if we power it from this side it travels to the same uh, location without carrying on straight basically. Then here we have a latch basically because Wirewall doesn't really know proper latches because there are no real on signals so to um, yeah instead they just use a um, clock basically. So a uh, signal on and off at a certain frequency is the same as a latch, sort of, as far as I understand it at least. Um, so yeah, we power that and then a uh, rising edge basically um, makes sure that the signal only um, goes through there once. So I'm not certain what the use of this is, but it's just a circuit that I found online. Um, so now let's take a look at that. So this is a, um, well, I don't know, signal crosser I guess. It's not too useful in this version because, yeah, it's three dimensional, um, this wire world, so you can just make signals cross over each other. But in a 2D version of wire world, it's fairly useful, obviously. So this signal will just carry straight on, and the same um, applies for this direction. Um, and you are not able to send a signal from here into that direction. If you send it from here, it will go to there, basically. Um, so then, these are a few things I made myself. It's basically just a thing that sends a signal back, for back and forth. Um, yeah, it, it might seem easy, but it's a bit more difficult than you would expect. Um, so I'm pretty happy that I 
got it to work like this, it's not too big. Um, and then I try to make one in uh, 3D basically, so wrapping it around a little. And that allowed for some distances in between uh, to be smaller, which makes this one a bit faster. So it's pretty cool that you can make it faster by uh, using the extra uh, dimension. So you should be able to see that this one at the front here goes backwards and forwards a bit more often that, that, than that one at the back. So yeah, that are those things. And this I'm not going to show because this is basically a worse version of that thing right there and that thing I will do a separate video on uh, fairly soon I guess just after I uploaded this uh, one um, and then this yeah this I won't show at all I think but yeah you can just download this world and have a look at it yourself basically both of these are binary counters um, then we got this which is basically a latch so in order to set it we power this and then at the right offset in the frequency we basically need to power this thing so I believe um, if we pause this it should, I believe it should be there when powering this location, I'm not certain though. Uh, that was too early apparently, so it needs to be there when powering it. So now it should turn it off, and there you go, it turned it off. So basically you just need to make sure the offset is correct, and if it is you can yeah, just uh, set and reset the latch. Um, and then this is a very fast clock that basically can't be turned off. It's just a way of starting it. So if we power this, we get the fastest clock you can make in Wireworld. Uh, and I'm fairly certain there's no way of turning clocks like this one off again. But yeah, I haven't seen it uh, yet anyways. So yeah, if we, as you can see, there's only one off signal in between every signal basically, or one off wire. And those are the circuits, so um, I guess I should show you a bit of uh, what the command blocks do. So here we have all the command blocks. Um, so this row um, initializes all the um, objectives and such. So if you would copy and paste these command blocks to another world, you would want to um, press this button before doing anything, basically. Um, then this um, is just a manual button of clearing um, for clearing the signal, so it basically does the same as dropping this block. Um, then here we can... Yeah, we have a clock that basically destroys all armor stands. Um, after you remove the block, so as you can see, if we place this and go into uh, spectator mode, there's an armor stand right there, that's the thing executing the commands basically. Um, and now if we were to turn this one off and we would destroy this block, the armor stand would stick around basically um, and cause a necessary lag I would assume. So for that reason I added this command block, but then this command block itself also causes lag. So I'm not entirely certain if you better have this on or off at the moment. Because this armor stand should in theory delete itself um, when a step happens anyway, so yeah. Um, then this is basically the um, circuit that makes this uh, summon uh, signal heads when being powered so the thing that does that basically um, so yeah if we would turn this off this behavior is gone but it also is a bit less laggy because this is basically executing all the time um, for all these green blocks so perhaps you don't want to remove the green blocks but you want less lag for just for a second so you can just turn that off in that case um, yeah, 
Then here this basically takes care of just the placement of these blocks and summoning the armor stands to go with them. So if we would turn this off and we would place this, as you can see it doesn't replace it with the redstone block. Um, and then if you turn it on it will replace all of these in a certain area with um, with the redstone block so there's no way of really choosing which ones you want to be redstone blocks and which you don't want to be redstone blocks or signals rather so as you can see it's turned into redstone blocks and then it did a few steps and they are back to wires again um, so yeah there's that then this is basically um, just everything um, that takes care of the wire world mechanics themselves so um, yeah this this is basically all you really need for the for wire world itself to work but all the controls are fairly nice obviously so um, but yeah for instance if you have this like so you can click uh, the button to just execute one step every time um, then this column is um, the clock so if you want to turn the clock on or off you can uh, just flip this lever and that went really fast um, so this then basically powers um, this thing at set an interval um, which apparently didn't work when there was only one game tick in between so when there's only one game tick it replaces this with a repeating command block but if we um, turn the speed down to 10 as you can see it now is a normal command block and there's just a redstone block being uh, summoned every 10 uh, game ticks so that's the clock and then the last thing right here um, is basically taking care of um, what it should do when dropping an item so all these red blocks or command blocks are the things that happen when you drop this red stained uh, clay and these yellow uh, ones are what happens when you drop this one so yeah if you want to turn that off uh, you just inflict that lever and now you can safely drop your items without anything happening um, so yeah that is basically um, why what? Um, feel free to download it if you were interested in the survival redstone uh, wire world you should probably check this version out um, as this is way more fun to play around with as it's actually responsive um, and the other one wasn't uh, the survival version um, so yeah that's it and see you all later bye